You wrote this fabulous article, Finding Signal in a Noisy World recently, where essentially you pointed out a trilemma about cryptocurrencies, and you believe that all of them are going to zero. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about that, because some people here might still have some, some crypto bags. Um, yeah, yeah, I hope you don't, <laughs> or if you don't, after this conference, sell them. Um, the, uh, so the, the concept I wrote it in the book, because I wanted to try to make it simple for people to under, under, understand. And, uh, and, and, in, and when we think about money, you don't want actually more money, and nobody wants more money. Um, because if you wanted more money, you would, a Venezuelan boulevard would be equal to a US dollar. You want, it, all money is is information, and it describes the thing you really want. What you want is, what money does is it measures what you have, and, 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 and what do I need to create what I want? It's just, so it's information that describes that. So, so and that, that want for you might be more time with my family, it might be a vacation, it might be out of ego, it might be if I have this much money, then other people will look at me better. It might be all sorts of things, but it describes the feeling, not the information. So when you have misinformation in money, and that misinformation in the form of monetary easing or printing, to be able to protect a debt-based system, and you're introducing massive misinformation in money, then everyone on the planet would be looking through that misinformation. And what they would be trying to do is they would be trying to escape with enough money to escape a system that was getting worse and worse. And through that lens, you could see all of the society breakdown and what's, uh, uh, what's happening, and they'd be really exposed. They wouldn't know, they'd, because we would all be, and, and you could ask me the same thing, well, how do you know? Because you must be looking through that same lens as well. And then you enter into um, Bitcoin, and, and, and Bitcoin comes out of that system, and it's a new system. It comes out of that system, and it, it, it monetizes really fast, and a whole bunch of people get rich on that system. And this is still printing and printing and printing and printing. And, but Bitcoin is the first it, it, it innovation that's, that take, is decentralized and secure. So completely decentralized and secure. And in a blockchain trilemma, you can only solve two of three sides of a, of a blockchain. Decentralization, security, and scalability. So, on, so it's the first thing in human history that's ever that we could rely on decentralization and security but it's not scalable. So what would happen in, a, uh, in, in that type of environment when you had something that, that created a whole bunch of value, and, but it was decentralized and secure? You could imagine a whole bunch of people would say, I'm gonna create the next one. And first, if you created a new Bitcoin, wouldn't it naturally be less decentralized and secure? Because it had to start later. There'd be less energy protecting it. So, so we could throw out those. Now, now, what else would it do? A bunch of people got rich on this, or they think that that's what it's about. And then what, the next thing it would do is, oh, I'm gonna create a different version of Bitcoin to be different, to be able to scale Ethereum, everything else. But they have to sacrifice centralization or decentralization or security. Let's throw out uh, security and say, because if, if you have something on a blockchain that's insecure, obviously people are going to lose all their money, it's not going to be worth anything. But now let's focus on the other ones that are, have to centralize. And ask a simple question to yourself. If they have to centralize, how could an economy ever deliver on this? How could you have DeFi on a centralized protocol? How could you have, if a, if a, if a blockchain is a, is a much more expense, uh, expensive, to run than a database, would Amazon ever move all their business to a more expensive uh, uh, blockchain? Because somebody would have to pay for that. And so if you have centralization, um, by very fact of having de de uh, centralization and the e e economy driving to, to a, a database instead of, nobody's gonna use a centralized blockchain over time. They're all going to zero. So, and, and that's what I think people missed, and they missed naturally because, because this information asymmetry, what's happening in, in their money. But what's, ha what's happening is Bitcoin is a protocol layer. And protocol one is decentralized, is, uh, uh, in Bitcoin itself, is decentralized and secure. And on top of that, now Lightning and other tarot and, and a whole bunch of other Fediment, a whole bunch of other things are being built on top 
that provides scalability on top without sac sacrificing the core. What that brings is it's going to look, Bitcoin is going to look like the internet. And that actually brings in a, a, a very important thing for governments that want to try to stop it. Because the, the, uh, North Korea stopped the internet for their citizens. How that turn out, right? So by stopping something that's moving so fast, that's moving to provide value, that's going to be a new peer-to-peer -peer internet, what they do is essentially, they don't stop it, the peer-to-peer -peer internet, they stop the value to their society from, stop, from stopping it, because it just moves to other places. <laughs>